Hey, you guys, John Britt here down at the Village Potters. We're doing a little um, video for our clay club. And the, we were trying to revive the clay club after uh, two years of COVID. And so now we're back at it. And we uh, thought we would do um, gold chino firing with the group of people. So we had everybody, about 15 people made pots up. And then some came to my studio to glaze and some glazed down here at the Village Potters. And then we, they brought them out to my place and I fired them out there. And now I'm reporting back. We got good, good and bad results, but the whole point of all this is that maybe we'll see what kind of results we got and then we can do another one or we can do another one, uh, have a workshop. So one could be the clay club and one could be a workshop. All right, so let me just show you what we did in terms of the firing. Uh, we did, these two firings, this is called R1. That means it's reduction. So we go up uh, to about 15, 1600 and put it in pretty solid reduction. I was telling them it was about uh, 75 on the 78 on the oxyprobe. Uh, and then out to cone 11 was down. So uh, I did it a little hot to make sure I got everything, at least cone 10. And then what I did was I pulled out the, the pots that were good because some of them look good in one firing and that's what we'll talk about here. And then I put them back in and I did this firing where I did the R1, it's called R1O. And I, so I did the reduction cycle. And then as I'm coming down, I turned it back on at 1800 and held it in oxidation for about six hours. And then that allows the, the iron to crystallize and make some of these nice luster effects. Okay, and I think that's all about the fire. I did another fire, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. And uh, what, what we found was that it was good on, um, the best thing is if it's on porcelain. So we did a bunch of different clay bodies in here. We did uh, Laguna 570 and 550. And then some people did uh, B-mix. And then uh, some people had their own clay bodies, which I'm not sure what they were, but it's always best on a vitrified porcelain. So we'll know that for next time. And it's also good if the pots are not too thick uh, that they can absorb the heat real well. So we found that the nice thin stuff worked really great. Good news was we didn't get any slumping because sometimes when you fire real hot, you can get some slumping. All right, so let me just start with, uh, I think Lori's here were very nice. These were uh, not in the gold chino range, but they were uh, in the carbon trap range. So I pulled these out after the first firing. Uh, really nice gold chino, I'm sorry, uh, Malcolm chino. And then she put wax here and that causes it to be white wherever the wax was. Uh, because the soda ash doesn't, uh, it migrates around the wax. Got another one here. These are very nice. I pulled these after the first firing because they were just so good that sometimes you put them in, they'll, they'll, you'll lose some of it. Some of that was cool where it turned orange, where it peeled away. That's very good. Uh, okay, and then there's just more, a whole bunch of these, so I don't have to show all of them, but those were good. And then I think uh, the ones of Lori's, th this shows the clay body difference. So this one on the right here was on porcelain, and you can see how it's more, much more lustrous. This one's just slightly duller. So. Yeah, the left is this one here is B mix, and this one here is uh, is it five seventy five seventy? Okay, so that was good to see. Then we had um, these. Some of these were very nice. This was let me read on here first. But this was Penn State Chino with ash sprinkled on. So so that was very nice. It's got very, you can see, I think you can see that surface here. 
It's very textural there. It feels really soft and nice. <laughs> yeah, and nice, yeah, and that wood ash. That wood ash where it soaks a little will get real satiny. Um, and then she had, she had other ones like that similar. This is one where the ash looks really good. It's real, it's real soft. The calcium crystallizes there real good. So those were fantastic. Um, I'm not sure what else we had. So this is another uh, way it'll sometimes look. Let me see. Um, can't remember. Oh, can't remember which one this was. But it, it'll. It's uh, X. I think was that Penn State with Wood. Oh, a lightly sprayed Malcolm Chino. Penn State with iron, and then wood ash on top. You can see this texture is really pronounced. Um, that's a little darker though. Here's one that was uh, in the pinky purpley range. Um, okay, let's see what else. I think these did. Did I pulled? I pulled one of these. Now, Gustin. Yeah, these I this one I pulled out after one firing. This is Gustin Chino with iron. And then Malcolm was inside. And then it crawled there a little. But the Malcolm was inside there. And then I think this was this was similar. So it can be done in one firing. Um and so it's just, it's just sort of spotty. What, what the problem is is sometimes, you know, you'll have two pots right next to each other uh, with the same glaze and they can look totally different. So if you're looking for, a, you know, reproducibility and uh, this might not be for you, but uh, uh, it's still fun to do. And they don't look bad, they just are not the same. Um, okay, so let's, here's, an here's a good example of, this is one of Lucas's of how the ash uh, will crystallize, be very nice. And he got some nice gold stuff there too. Uh, let's see, here's one. This is on, I'm not sure what his clay body was. He should be here soon, but that's a very nice goldy surface. And uh, the inside is nice with the ash, kind of peach, peachy in there. Let's see what else he had. This was a really, this one got very lustrous too. It's like pinky, purpley. Just very, it's just, oh, oh this is the one where I did uh, the second, the third firing. I did an extra fire, let me see. I think you can see in there. It's uh, which way do I go? Do I go this way. I go this way. You see how it's crazed in there? That is just from this firing called. Let me turn this page for you. It's this firing. I put them back in, and then I go in an electric kiln to 1600, and basically just hold it for four hours, and then it will uh, cause that. Uh, all the crackle pattern to be the iron migrates somehow in there and makes it look like the it was stained with coffee or something. But it's just from that firing. All right, what else I got here? I think I was probably on to, well, this is a good one. Here's a good one. We had quite a few pots in there. I didn't bring them all, but these are pretty uh, good indicators of kind of what it was. So that got pretty nice and gold. Um, then these were, <laughs> here's where the, these were Julia's and um, what happened on these, these were cool. These were, uh, it's got that carbon trap there and she dipped the whole thing into gold button. The whole thing just dipped in gold button and then she put her hand like this 
and then dipped it in um, dipped it in Malcolm's on the bottom. And you can see we're, we're thinking that maybe it got thicker down here and that's why it did that uh, crackly pattern down there. But it's just really nice. And this one was just the, uh, the gold button with 25 with no Malcolm. So that shows you what the Malcolm did to this uh, surface. So this has retained the, the gold and it's got those crystals. Yeah, very nice. And this one actually got, you can see on this one, you're getting the carbon trap is not just, it's turning it kind of a steely color instead of keeping the gold, but actually the rim is very nice color there. Anyway, let's see what else we, this was a good one. This was, this, okay, so when you do these, uh, basically you're taking a chino and adding iron to it. So you can add different kinds of iron uh, and, different amounts. And so on this one, they added 1%. A lot of times I'll add three and some people add five. So somewhere in there, you can do it. But this one was particularly nice. Maybe a good way to go when you redo them. Oh yeah, so this one she did Penn State on the whole cup and then dipped the outside like that in into Malcolm. And that, then she got this nice uh, carbon trappy stuff. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, was this was a good. This was a good one. This one had a button gold on it. Inside, particularly, I don't know if you can see that. It's very gold in there. And then she dipped the outside. You can see up to this line, she dipped it in uh, Malcolm Chino. And so that stopped all the gold, but made all this kind of cool carbon trappy. Almost looks like it was painted with like a gold luster brush on there. That's pretty good. All right. Some, I, I don't know if that might be all that I got. I had a few others of these of some I did that were not too bad. They were, uh, similar effects, uh, pinky, peachy. These are all on frost porcelain. I think that's Laguna. Uh, then if you can find a nice um, vitrified porcelain is best. Uh, so I don't know if anybody sells like the, I don't know, they have the Southern ice and those really super fine porcelains. Those might be nice. Maybe next time we can try uh, different bodies and see what we can get. Okay, so we're hoping uh, we can revive the clay club here a little bit and then do another gold uh, firing uh, either for clay club, uh, just the same way. Uh, also, we might do one down at Village Potters with the, like as a workshop or something. All right, make 10,000 of those and we'll see you tomorrow.